there's some of you out there, you never heard of this. What is a collective consciousness? It is all of us thinking the same thought, which then becomes powerful. It's the power of prayer. That's what prayer is. And I'm not preaching to you, and I'm not talking religion. I'm talking fact. This is the truth. This is one of the ultimate truths that's been withheld from us. A thought, a pure thought, if enough people think it will manifest itself as reality. And when it manifests, it grows. And as it grows, it will take on a three-dimensional quality. And that's why the pyramid is the building block of the universe. And individual thought, our consciousness, is what arranges everything that is into what can be in the future. Now, you don't have to believe this, but this is what I'm telling you these men believe. They think this. They believe it. And as far as I can tell, they appear to be right. My name is William Cooper. I have been for a number of years now attempting to wake up the American people. I believe in the Constitution completely. That is my one and only political stance is that I am a constitutionalist. I am an American. I believe in this country. I believe that what our forefathers set up for us, they gave us all the tools to make sure that if we were capable, we could not fail. If we were not capable, we were guaranteed to fail. I believe that if the Constitution says something's okay, it is. If it says it's not, it isn't. And that's all there is to it. I'm not a Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Populist, or anything else. I'm just an American. And I go through life wondering why there's no other Americans around but me. I think that's very strange. I think it's absolutely incredible myself that we have a country full of Democrats, Republicans, Libertarian, Populists, no Americans. So that's my political viewpoint. For those of you who are wondering if I'm a communist or, or if I'm a, uh, a Democrat or if I am a follower of the Nazi movement or whatever that happens to be, I'm not. I'm just an American. What makes me different is I can guarantee you that very few of you who have ever seen a real American before. No matter what you think of yourself, if you've been manipulated into believing that you have to be a Democrat or a Republican, if you have to call yourself a liberal or, you're a, con or a conservative, then you stopped being an American when you made that decision. Because there is no such thing. If you believe in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, <coughs> then you're an American. If you believe anything else, you're not. It's as simple as that, because that document is America. If you don't believe me, tear it up and throw it in the trash can and see how long this country exists. America is that document, and it is nothing else other than that document. So if you believe in this country, you must believe in that document. Otherwise, you're believing in something else. You see, one of the reasons that we've gotten to this point, folks, is that most people are blindly believing on faith what they're told by a lot of people. A lot of people. The government, for one. Your parents, for another. And a lot of untruths have been passed down and are still being passed down from father to son to his son, to his son, and mother to daughter, and so on and so forth. We were taught, at least when I grew up, that this was the greatest country in the world, and it could never fail, and our government could not ever do us dirty, would never lie to us. It just couldn't happen. And I'm here to tell you that it hasn't happened. For the last 40 years, our government has not been allowed to function as it was meant to function by our forefathers. It has been infiltrated, it is being controlled. It has been subverted. So be very careful because there are people in the land 
whose message is, our government has failed, democracy doesn't work, the republic is not viable, the constitution doesn't work, must be replaced with some other form of government. You be very careful that you don't buy that. Well, some of the things you're going to learn tonight are going to open your eyes and open your ears, and I hope it will open your mind to the fact that what you've perceived as reality for the last 50 years has been the biggest snow job that probably uh, has ever occurred in the history of the world. I'm going to tell you right now, what you perceive as reality is nothing more than a ride in Mr. Toad's car in fantasy land in Disneyland, and your e-ticket has expired. They're closing the park, folks. We're being subverted. The Constitution is being destroyed. It's in the process of being relegated to the trash can, and most Americans don't even understand that. These men who make up the mystery schools, the guardians of the secrets of the ages, the structure of their organizations always exists in a pyramidal form with the majority of members on the bottom rung and each rung requiring degrees of initiation with a very small group at the top controlling this gigantic number of people below them and they are used to gain a consensus of opinion by which these men control the society. They exist I did many different names, many different occupations, at times they appear to oppose each other because they practice Hegelian conflict resolution. Thesis, antithesis, the clash between the two results in synthesis, which is always where they wanted to get to begin with. But to get there without you realizing that they're the ones who manipulated you there, they divide you up into opposing groups, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Socialist, Communist, and they cause you to fight with each other. They are the ones who create the problem that will give them the solution that they want, but it is you conflicting with each other that brings about that solution, that synthesis. And in that respect, they're absolutely right. We are no better than cattle. And we are stupid because we don't even realize that we're being manipulated in that manner. This is what they believe. They believe that we are cattle who do not use our intellect and thus our stakes on the table by choice and consent for those who do use their intellect. I want to wake you up to the point where you can stand in front of a mirror and say with no hesitation, I've been stupid all my life and I'm never going to be stupid again and that you will begin to use your intellect so that we can control our destiny because if we don't, a small group of men meeting in secret will. Make no mistake about it, they will. And the only way that they can do that is if we are brought under complete and total control on a 24-hour basis. And that's what the New World Order is all about. When I was with the intelligence briefing team and the commander-in-chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, I saw documentation that said extraterrestrials are real. They're not only real, but they're here. They're not only here, but in 1954, an agreement was made between the United States government and these at least one group of extraterrestrial beings for the exchange of technology. And in return, we agreed not to disclose their presence here on Earth. We also agreed to allow them to abduct human beings on a limited periodic basis for the purpose of medical examination and the monitoring of our development. That this was being, the exchange of technology was being conducted in an area called Dreamland, which was in some place uh, which had a first name of Yucca, and I can't remember what the last part was, but I've been able to locate several Yuccas, Yucca Valley, Yucca Proving Ground, Yucca Flat, and there may be even more. But I do remember that whatever this Yucca was, was in the Mojave Desert. And it was called Dreamland. I know that recovered, crashed, extraterrestrial craft in these documents that I read were being tested first in an area called Tonopah, and second in an area after it was built called Groom Dry Lake or Area 51. 
I can take you today, this very minute, to a spot in the Nevada desert outside of the Atomic Energy Commission test site near Groom Dry Lake. You can bring cameras, videotapes, whatever you want, and you can stand there in the desert if you're willing to stay there two or three nights and watch these craft fly. Watch them being test flown by the United States government. Now you have to understand that there is so much deception and manipulation involved with the bringing about of the New World Order that even as far back as 1972, I could have been shown these documents to make me go out eventually, knowing my psychological profile and my patriotism, and talk about this. The Cold War was a scam. The United States and the Soviet Union have been operating a secret space program out of the public view since the end of World War II. They have developed a technology that would make George Lucas and Steven Spielberg turn green with envy. Resembles nothing less than sheer magic. For those of you who are interested in alternative healing methods, they don't withhold those things from the public so doctors can get rich, like, like I've heard from so many people who are into alternative methods of healing. They do it to keep the population of the masses in check. They want people to die. People have to die. The sooner the better, in their estimation. Why? Let me tell you why. Because between 1957 and 1990, the population of the world doubled. I remember going around for years wondering, what the hell is going on? I mean, everything's different. It's not the same anymore. And it wasn't. It was mainly a result of increased population. What happened between 1950 and 1990 is going to happen again in maybe as little. See, that was 33 years. It may only take another 28 years because it's an exponential doubling. Each time, it only takes a shorter period of time. Between 1957 and 1990, when the population doubled, that, mean we, that meant we needed twice as many trees, twice as many homes, twice as many highways, twice as many cars, twice as much gasoline, twice as much clean, fresh water, twice as much food, twice as much cotton, twice as many wigs, twice as many barber shops. And guess what, folks? In another 28 years, we're going to need twice as many of everything else again. How long do you think that this earth can support that kind of thing? A lot of what's going on in the world is about population. It's about the survival of the human race. It's about the ultimate victory in this race between good and evil, the balance of the universe. Who's going to win? And what are they going to do with everybody else that doesn't win? This country was founded as the answer to that problem. The United States, we've all known, anybody who's lived in this country has known that this country somehow is special, not because we live here, simply because this was the ultimate pinnacle of achievement of mankind throughout the history of this earth. Never in history had any peoples ever been granted kings, sovereign kings in their own right with the government as their chattel slave until the Bill of Rights, or excuse me, not the Bill of Rights, but the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution was written. And later the Bill of Rights, which filled in some of the things that were left out of the Constitution. How do I know this? This guy is wacko. This is no different from any other country. It's just our forefathers had bigger guns than King George did. It can be proven mathematically. And now you think I'm really nuts. 
these men who run these secret societies, who are the guardians of the secrets of the ages, knew a secret. They knew lots of secrets, but they knew one secret that is more important than any other secret that can be learned. They know what God really is. They know it. They're not going to tell us. Now, I think I've learned some part of this secret. Everything that they do has a mathematical precision to it that is nothing short of astounding. Absolutely astounding. Einstein said it once. He said there's nothing, nothing that can't be figured out with mathematics, proven with mathematics. He said history can be proven with mathematics, and he was right. This seems to be a mathematical universe. I'm going to give you some numbers, and I hope that you write them down, because these are the important numbers. One, three, seven, eleven, and thirteen, and any multiple of those numbers. Every significant event that has ever happened throughout history has happened on a date with a combination of these numbers. When was President Kennedy assassinated? What was the date? Month was November, wasn't it? What month is that? What day? 22. That's a multiple of 11, isn't it? 1963? What have you got there? You got a 9, you got a 6, and a 3. All multiples of 3. And if you take the 1 and add it on to the 7, I mean to the 6, you have a 7 in there. Or if you add them all up together, what do they come up to? Pardon? 19, 9, and 1 is what? 10. Now, if you know numerology, 10 is the number 1, isn't it? It never fails. It never, ever fails. When was this country started? 1776. Two sevens, a six, and a one. Figure it out, folks. I mean, I don't have to stand up here and do this all night. You can figure it out with any important dates throughout the history of the world. It is just absolutely true. Now, you can go a step further. They believe, and I've come to believe this also, and that's why my job is so important. We have to raise, as the answer to this battle, we have to raise the collective consciousness of the entire human race, and we have to do it quickly. It must be done. I know there's some of you out there, you never heard of this. What is a collective consciousness? It is all of us thinking the same thought, which then becomes powerful. It's the power of prayer. That's what prayer is. And I'm not preaching to you, and I'm not talking religion. I'm talking fact. This is the truth. This is one of the ultimate truths that's been withheld from us. A thought, a pure thought, if enough people think it will manifest itself as reality. And when it manifests, it grows. And as it grows, it will take on a three-dimensional quality. And that's why the pyramid is the building block of the universe. And individual thought, our consciousness, is what arranges everything that is into what can be in the future. Now, you don't have to believe this, but this is what I'm telling you. These men believe. They think this. They believe it. And as far as I can tell, they appear to be right. Nobody told me all this, folks. It's just that in all my years of studying these secret societies, all of a sudden... I began to become illuminated, which is what they call themselves. If you study something long enough, sooner or later you become to understand it. If you start at the apex of the first pyramid, remember there are three. Go from the top to the left corner on the bottom and across to the right corner of the first one. And then start at the top of the second one. And put those Roman, Roman numerals at each corner. Across the top, you will come up with MCX. 
MCX is 1,110. That was the date that the ultimate branch of this secret group of men founded the Knights Templar, which is still in existence no matter what you've been told. It was founded by the prior de Sion in the city of Jerusalem. It was commissioned to find and guard the last remaining relics of Jesus Christ and to guard the pilgrims who were traveling to and from the Holy Land. They weren't destroyed because they were controlling the money of the King of France, as you see in history, because history has been rewritten to make you believe what they want you to believe. It was destroyed because they withheld these relics from the Pope and from the King when they demanded that they be turned over. Now, if you take 1,110 and take the culmination of prophecy and add to it, which is 666, what do you get? <laughs> you get 1776. The Knights Templar were founded to fulfill prophecy, and this country was founded to fulfill prophecy. By these men, according to a mathematical formula, See, I'm always assembling two puzzles. I'm assembling the truth in this puzzle here, and over here I'm trying to assemble what they want me to believe. I don't throw away anything, and I listen to everyone. I read everything that I can get my hands on. Because it's important. How can you fight a war with an enemy that you don't know anything about? And if you don't know what their deception plan is, how do you know that you're not living it? How do you know that you haven't fallen for it and aren't fulfilling their plan of deception to keep you busy if you don't even know what it is? So it's important you have to do these things. It's absolutely important. Now, this is not a literal meaning in this story. It is, I guess, the metaphor of their God. These men who control these secret societies, who really control this country and every other country in the world, and thus the world, believe that man was held captive in the bonds of ignorance in the Garden of Eden by a vindictive, unjust God named Jehovah. And that Lucifer, the angel of light, who was cast out of heaven, to the earth, and is the angel of the earth, the god of this world, set man free from the bonds of ignorance through his agent Satan by enticing Eve to get man to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Thus Lucifer gave man the gift, the gift of reason, by which man through technology, will become God. That is at the root of their philosophy. And that is the true, true satanic thought, if you want to call it that. If you're a Christian, that's what you're going to label it. Others would say that these are learned men who have discovered that superstition is the wrong way to live a life. And that by using your intellect and your brain, man will become God. I'm not going to argue those points. It's not why we're here. I'm here to impart knowledge to you, if I can, for those who will accept it and will take it out and prove it right or prove it wrong and use it. Because we're engaged in the ultimate battle for man himself, your very soul. This is what this is all about. It's what everything is all about. The final battle between good and evil. There's a balance in the universe. And if thought can manifest itself as reality, just as it did in the beginning, its antithesis will also manifest. And that is where the balance of the universe is maintained. You have to understand 
that the word good has no literal meaning whatsoever if bad does not exist. There can be no good without evil. There can be no evil without good. A woman without a man will be the last in her line of species. Whether she's an ant, whether she's a human, whether she's a bird, makes no difference. A man without a woman will be the last in his species. There can be no positive without negative. It doesn't exist. I've had some real belly laughs over this concept in the New Age movement that you're not supposed to to think a negative thought, that you're supposed to dismiss all negativity from your mind. You can't live that way. It doesn't work. To do that is to say, there will never be a problem, and if there is, I will turn my head and walk the other way. It's a trap. Carefully laid, but it's a trap. We all have, as I said the other night, a spark of divinity in us, a spark of God, a part of God. God made the universe. We all are a part of God, but no part can ever be greater than or as great as the whole. It cannot be. All of us together and everything that's in the universe together with the ultimate law of the universe is God. doesn't matter how you visualize this God as a person or as energy, or whatever. If you believe that there is an ultimate law to the universe, there must be a God. Otherwise, physics couldn't exist. There can't be order without someone or something that makes the rule, that makes the order. And it doesn't have to be a person, but you have to understand that something is dictating the order of the universe. When they started this country, the United States of America, they did it to find out. See, everything they've done since the fall of the monarchs has been an experiment to find out what is the best government for the world that will result in lasting peace where man doesn't have to kill man anymore. You see, I'm not totally against everything that these guys have as goals. I'm totally against the way they're going about it. I'm against the fact that they think I'm stupid and can't participate and won't give me a chance in a country that's supposed to be up for and by the people. That's what I'm against. You know, I believe that we ultimately have to find some way, all of us, to come together and stop killing each other. But I don't believe that's going to happen by manipulating a new world order, a one world government or by locking people in chains because somebody's always going to be killing somebody else unless we collectively are able to make an evolutionary movement above all of that so that I don't have to be afraid of you coming to steal what I have. So that I don't have to be afraid of you getting together an army and coming to kill me. You see? All this manipulation by these secret societies is not going to amount to a hill of beans unless we can do this ourselves. And the only way they can, we can do that is by collectively believing in ourselves, using our intellect, really becoming spiritual people, not talking it or going to seminars and feeling good that you went to a seminar and now you're a spiritual person. First thing you have to understand before you can correct a problem is you have to understand what the problem is. Our problem is our nature. And that's why we must make an evolutionary jump forward in our collective consciousness as a species in order to stop this stuff. How can it be done? By beginning to think it and live it and communicate it and educate others. That's the way it can be done. That's the way it will be done. By using your intellect, we're not fighting any more wars. We're not going to kill anybody else. Did you really believe that for the last 45, 50 years, that all the Russians were sitting around their kitchen tables plotting ways to do away with us? Did you really believe that? 
How many of you think that that was happening? Good. Most Americans did, I think. They thought that every Russian wanted to come over here and wage war on us and bomb us off the planet. It's not true, folks. Those people sitting around their kitchen table were worried about where they were going to get their next ruble and how they were going to feed their kids for the next month and whether or not they were going to get a promotion at the plant just like all of you were doing for the last 40, 45 years. It's the leaders that manipulate us into these things for reasons that never become apparent to us unless we start digging and it usually boils down to money. It only happens because we let it happen. We only let it happen because we really are stupid and we really don't use our intellect. And that's why I said earlier that you must be able to stand in front of your mirror and admit it to yourself. And only then, once you've admitted that that problem exists, can you begin to correct it. I had to do it, and it took me a long time to do it because I was a pretty proud, pretty brainwashed, oriented, establishment, gung-ho, military idiot. And that's the truth. I was stupid. But I'm not stupid today. And I hope you're not stupid today, and I hope you won't be stupid tomorrow or the next week or the month after that. But you will never get out of that until you can admit it first. That's important. You have to stop fighting someone because that person looks different. I had to just crack up. You know, I'd be on a radio talk show somewhere talking about my experiences and what I had learned, and somebody would call in. And this happened on many occasions because it's part of the government's campaign to discredit me in the eyes of the public. Somebody always calls in and says, we have proof that Bill Cooper is a member of a branch of the white Aryan race and is a racist. I wish my wife was here because that's when I asked my wife to come in. My wife is Chinese, you see. And I always laugh at that point because they didn't do their homework. That's why it's so easy to beat this enemy. They never do their homework. I have people call in now and say that I'm anti-Semitic because I published the Protocols of Zion in my book. They pick up my book and they live through it in Protocols of Zion. Oh my God, we've got to mobilize the communities and anti-Semitic. He wants to kill all the Jews. I published the Protocols of Zion so that you would begin to understand what is happening, what has happened, and what's going to happen. The test of a document is not who somebody said wrote it or didn't write it. That doesn't make any difference whatsoever. The test of a document, such as the Protocols of Sion, as I have published in my book absolutely accurately, I did not change one word, were written in the 1700s, folks. And the test of the authenticity of a document is not whose name is signed on the bottom, it's whether or not the plan in the document is carried out. And the plan in that document has been carried out to the letter since the 1700s, and the only thing that has not come to pass as of this day that's outlined in that document is they have not yet placed a descendant of the house of David who can say that he's related to Jesus Christ on the throne of the world. And when they do, he will not be the enemy. He will be the figurehead of the real shadow power that lies behind the throne, just like right now today. How many of you believe that Ronald Reagan was really running this country? How many of you thought it was Nancy? If you guessed Nancy, you were closer to the truth than if you guessed Ronald, because Nancy is the granddaughter of John W. Davis, the founding president of the Council on Foreign Relations. It was when he married Nancy that he went from a liberal Democrat to a conservative Republican and became a serious political contender. Why did they choose him through Nancy to become the president of the United States? How many of you men in here served in the armed forces of your country? How many of you realized at some point that every single training film that you watched was narrated by Ronald Reagan? See, you were already conditioned and brainwashed that he was the voice of authority and that
that you should vote for him even though you didn't make that conscious connection. The election that brought Ronald Reagan into power was rigged many years earlier. Was rigged. Every man who ever served in the armed forces in this country voted for Ronald Reagan. Because they had been trained to listen to him, to believe him, and thus to vote for him. Although they may not have consciously made that connection in their mind, it's the truth. How many of you recently saw a show on television called Nostradamus, the man who saw tomorrow, narrated by Charlton Heston. How many of you saw that? Okay. How many of you who saw it recognized that it was the same old one that was originally narrated by Orson Welles that had been chopped up and re-pieced together and was now narrated by Charlton Heston? How many of you realized that? How many of you saw at the end that they had changed it and that the man in the turban who was to be the Antichrist was no longer the man in the turban, but was a man in a blue beret, and his name was Saddam Hussein. And that Charlton Heston, who has a top secret Q clearance and who makes the training films for the intelligence community and other branches of the military, said that when this despot, this Hitler, this Antichrist, is once and forever deposed by our forces in the Middle East, the world will come together as one. How many of you remember that? That was a propaganda film aimed at you, the American people, by the intelligence community of the United States of America, and most people were too stupid to even understand it. And you think that this doesn't happen in America? I bet you can check it out at your video store, and you should. What was the thing at the 1984 Olympic Games that came down and landed in the center of the Coliseum? It was a UFO. Why? Why a commercial of Docker Slacks that says, hey, guys, America's hosting EBs. Guys, the EBs, what's an EB? EB is an extraterrestrial biological entity, and America is hosting EBs. And everybody says EBs, GBs, and they show the label of Docker Slacks. What's that got to do with Docker, Docker Slacks? Docker Slacks. Nothing, but it's got a lot to do with brainwashing you, the people, to accept an extraterrestrial presence here on this earth. And the landing of the UFO in the Coliseum at the Olympic Games and Dr. Slacks are both Levi Strauss-sponsored events. That's just one. The multinational corporations are participating in this brainwashing. Why? Because the New World Order, there's not going to be any small business, folks. There are going to be huge, gigantic, multinational, corporate, conglomerate monopolies. These are just examples of how they're flaunting it right in front of your nose and how people are buying this and sucking it up. I don't even understand what's going on. It's an example of what they believe to be true proving itself to be true, and that's what's got to stop. You've got to stop proving to them that we're cattle, that we're stupid, that we can't use our intellect, and we're not worthy of governing ourselves, because that's the decision they've made, and that's why the New World Order has to be. You see, this government was founded as an experiment to become the New World Order in one of two ways. Either by proving that people could through the tools that they gave us, really, honestly, truthfully, and forever rule themselves, or they would fail miserably, and they would lock us down under tight control, and they would rule us. The decision was that the experiment has failed, and I have to tell you, they're absolutely right. When nobody votes, we're not running this country. When nobody cares, we're not running this country. When you elect professional politicians time after time after time to the same office, we're not running this country. We don't even pay them. Why would you even dream that they're representing us? They have no reason to represent us. They're paid by the federal government. See, our, our country was set up so that citizens would go serve in the state house or in Washington. 
for one term from any community and one term only, no matter what office they held, and never go back again. And while they were gone, the community sent them rations to subsist upon, took care of their farm or their business, and made sure that their family was fed and their health was taken care of. They had a vested interest in making sure that they represented that community, wouldn't you say? Who have we sent to Washington or to the State House lately that has a vested interest in representing any of us? I can't count one. I can't count any that even care. There are ways and means to control people. The Illuminati found out many, many years ago that it is better to have people ask for the control than to force it on them. Does everybody understand that concept? In other words, if I ask for you to put shackles on my ankles, I'm not going to complain when you do. But if you come and try to put them on my ankles and I didn't ask for it, you're liable to have a hell of a big fight if I'm capable of giving you one. That's what that means. That's when they began to practice, and they did this long before Hegel came along, and Hegel may have been verbalizing um, the, the philosophy of the Illuminati when he wrote his papers, which outlined the philosophy of, of uh, Hegelian conflict resolution through thesis, antithesis, the clash between the two produces the synthesis. Now let me tell you how easily this is done. The Soviet Union, well first, let's start here in the United States. This country was founded, fought for, and established by only 3% of the entire people who lived in the first 13 colonies. The Soviet Union was founded, was fought for, and established by only 5% of the entire people who live within the boundaries of the Soviet Union. Does everybody understand what I'm telling you? This is significant. Throughout history, in any major world change, it has been accomplished by less than 5% of the population in any place where it ever happened. So for those of you with no hope, that should give you hope. It should give you lots of hope. Because we don't need everybody to make this a good world. Proof of it, in my estimation. The bankers on Wall Street and in London financed the Bolshevik Revolution. This is documented. It's been proven many times. The United States of America and London bankers have kept the Soviet Union afloat for all these years. It's been proven. The Rockefeller family has a branch of Chase Bank in the Kremlin was David Rockefeller the fired Khrushchev. How many of you knew that? One man, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's true because Khrushchev talks too much. He said in the United Nations on television, we don't have to bomb the United States. We don't have to bring an army and conquer you. You will be destroyed from within. Bam, Rockefeller was on a plane <laughs> to Moscow and three days later Khrushchev step down. He almost gave the plan away. The Council on Foreign Relations really rules this country. No matter what you've been taught, no matter what you've been told. In the back of my book, I've documented in the Bush administration exactly who is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission, which is a branch of the Council on Foreign Relations. They have infiltrated our government and control it from within. The executive, the judicial, the highest ranks of the military, and many members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. The only one who's not a member is Dan Quayle. How many of you think Dan Quayle is a blithering idiot? There's a lot of people in here afraid to raise their hand, or else they know what I'm going to say next. Dan Quayle is one of the most powerful men in this country. Dan Quayle was the representative of the United States of America to the meeting of the Bilderberg Group in Baden-Baden this year. They don't take blithering idiots in the Bilderberg Group. So stop laughing at Dan Quayle. They're putting out the image that they want you to have of him rather than the reality of who this man is. His family helped bring George Bush to power. 
His family owns controlling interest of Lilly Pharmaceuticals. His family has helped George Bush run the drug consortium that is feeding the economy to bring together the New World Order and fund all the black projects that they can't get money from Congress for. How many of you never knew where the drugs came from in this country or think it's from the Colombian drug lords? Be honest. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but I want to see how many people here don't know what's going on. Okay, for those of you who don't know, let's do this little exercise. It's always good for everybody, even if you know it, because it reinforces what you know. Everybody close your eyes, and on the back of your eyelids, draw a map of the United States and all its possessions. And on that map, put a little dot, wherever there is a city or a town, anywhere in the United States and all of its possessions. Now, if you've done it right, there should be so many little dots on that map that it would take you quite a long time to count them, because that's how many cities and towns there really are in this great country of ours. Now, now that you've seen that, understand this. In every single one of those little cities and big cities and towns and communities in this country and in all of our possessions, anyone who wants to can get any kind of narcotic in any quantity that they wish at any time, day or night. And then try to tell me that it's the Colombian drug lords who have such a protection and a distribution network and an accounting system that make sure that the right amount of drugs are delivered to the right city and the right town on time and the right quantity and are caught. Because they never run out. The only ones who get caught are the ones that are in competition with the Central Intelligence Agency. And the drug war is not a war on drugs. They're concentrating on the users. It's a war on the Bill of Rights. It's a war on us. It is a Galian conflict resolution. It is thesis, antithesis, synthesis. They decide what they want, and they put in motion the problem that will arrive at the solution that they want, and they cause us to ask for that solution. George Bush, ladies and gentlemen, is the foremost and first number one traitor that I'm able to identify in this country right at this very moment. And that's why the other night when I came on stage, I introduced myself as George Bush's worst nightmare. Because as a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence, I happen to know that it was George Bush who headed up and started the first large-scale drug smuggling operations into this country when he was the president and CEO of the offshore oil division of Zapata Oil in the Gulf of Mexico. The drugs were brought in from Central and South America to the offshore oil platforms and then by the normal crew conveyance to the beach, circumventing any customs or law enforcement inspection. Most of the boats who brought the drugs to the platforms were shrimp boats and fishing boats. Everybody in the intelligence community knows this. Every legitimate investigation into the source of drugs in this country has led right to the doorstep of the CIA. George Bush has been a lifelong member of the CIA. He wasn't just the head of the CIA for a couple of years. He's been a member all his life. He's a member of the Skull and Bones, the Order, the Jason Society, the Council on Foreign Relations, and the Trilateral Commission, whose stated public goal is to destroy the sovereignty of this nation and bring the world together in a one world government. They have written it so many times. So how can we elect a president who belongs to an organization who states he wants to do away with the sovereignty of nations and then he takes an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution? I mean, there's something wrong there. It doesn't click, does it? And I hope that's not repeated. You know, when I first began what I was doing, I heard of a gentleman who was a Vietnam War veteran, a hero, who was talking about something that he learned in the Golden Triangle. Drugs being purchased by high-level American officials. But years ago, I got on the bandwagon and helped him out. Started spreading his message. Then I found out that this man was the principal agent to the National Security Council for the Intelligence Support Agency of the Special Operations Division of the Department of Defense. You know what that is? That's Ollie North's boss. And now he's running for president on the Populist Party ticket. And let me tell you something. You can never elect any of us who have ever served in any capacity in any intelligence organization ever to any office, period. And that includes me. Because you're never going to know your whole life whether you can trust any of us 
because anybody who served in any intelligence branch in this country was working for and toward the New World Order under the UN Participation Act and the UN Treaty signed by Harry Truman at the end of World War II. That's why and how all this is working. Under the full protection of the National Security Act. And drug cargoes are flown into this country every day, labeled top secret. I wondered why Bo never named anybody that was participating there. And then I found out that he was the senior army intelligence officer in Central America, and he's telling me he didn't know that we were bringing cocaine in on military aircraft from Central and South America. Doesn't compute, folks. If he was the head of military intelligence in Central America, he knew everything and was helping do it. We must grow up. You have to send one of you to office, not one of us. And even though I'm up here professing to be operating the best interests of this country, I have to tell you, you can never, ever trust that to be true. That's why I tell you, don't believe what I tell you. You go out and find out if it's true on your own. You go out and prove it wrong or prove it right. And if you prove it wrong, I want you to call me because if I'm wrong, I want to know. I want to change it. What usually happens is they find out I'm right and they become an ally. But you have to find it out yourself. You can never go along the assumption that what I'm telling you is the truth or that what anybody else is telling you is the truth. The primary method of control of any government or people is money. Money. Cash. We lost this government in 1913 when the Federal Reserve was established. I hope everybody in here knows what the Federal Reserve is, and I'm sure that most people believe that it is an agency of the federal government. I'm going to tell you tonight that it is not. It is not an agency of the federal government. It is not an agency of Congress or of any other agency of government. The Federal Reserve is a privately owned corporation. The majority of stock is owned by European banking interests controlled by the House of Rothschild, which is the Bank of England. Understand that. Understand that the Council on Foreign Relations was established by its sister group, or parent group, you might say, which is the Royal Institute of International Affairs in England. The Royal Institute of International Affairs is also called Chatham House. Chatham House is the elite club of British intelligence. The Council on Foreign Relations is an extension of British intelligence, is one of the highest levels of what I call the Illuminati. It was members of this elite group that before the Council on Foreign Relations was established used to meet in New York City as a dinner club. Nevertheless, they were about the same business. They established a group that met on Jekyll Island to bring about what is known today as the Federal Reserve Banking System. This group was made up mostly of international bankers, all who owed allegiance to the Rothschild family, the House of Rothschild, the family that literally owns the country of England. And I'm not going to go into the history of that because it takes some time. The Federal Reserve is constitutionally improper, illegal, it's under the color of law, it was passed probably illegally. What they do, folks, is they've circumvented the Constitution which says that a unit of money in the United States is called a dollar. And a dollar is a specific measurement of gold or silver coin only. And if paper is used in place, it must be redeemable for exactly one dollar measurement of gold or silver coin. That's constitutional money. You can't get in trouble if you have that kind of money. Over the years, they took us off that kind of money. If you'll look in your pocket and pull out one of those dollar bills, you'll see that it says Federal Reserve Note. A note, by definition, is a piece of paper that says that somebody owes somebody else some money. It cannot be redeemed for anything. They have even taken the worth from the coins of this country. If you look at your coins, you'll see that they're no longer silver coins. They're what's called copper clad. They're copper with a thin layer of silver plating over them. Our money has no value whatsoever. 
it is worthless. When you use Federal Reserve notes, you're paying for something with an instrument of debt, which means you really haven't paid for what you bought. You haven't paid for it. You've given the guy a note that says somebody owes somebody some money. But who it is and how it's going to be collected is never specified, is it? Here's how it works. The United States government says to the Federal Reserve, we need $1 million. The Federal Reserve says, fine. Here it is, and it's issued in the form of credit. Where does this money come from, this $1 million? It comes right out of thin air as a bookkeeping error. A bookkeeping entry, it is an error. <laughs> as a bookkeeping entry in a ledger. Literally, that's where it comes from. The money never existed. They don't take money out of a bank vault and give it to the federal government. They create it out of thin air. They make a bookkeeping entry that says there's $1 million was loaned to the federal government as credit. The credit is good at any Federal Reserve Bank. How is this money paid? It's paid by check, which is then deposited in an account. And when that person wants to spend money, they write a check, don't they? That's how they get away with it. Because you never find out that the money was never printed. That's why you were encouraged to use credit cards, debit cards, and checks to get the currency out of circulation so that you can never catch them stealing from you. That's why I can safely predict that the New World Order is going to have a cashless system where no cash will ever be used and everything will be by electronic transaction, done by computers. And you will either have a debit card or a tattoo. How do I know this? Not because it says it in the Book of Revelations. Not because somebody else told me to but because the only way that they can keep creating wealth out of thin air and get you to buy it and steal from you is if they do away with cash altogether. It's just plain logic, folks. It's called using your intellect, which I was told at one time my IQ was 110, so it can't be that hard. It just can't be that hard. If I can do it with 110 IQ, everybody in here can do it. All of my predictions are based upon study, hard work, research, knowing what they need to do to continue their plan. And every one of them come true. As I said before, my goal is for none of them to come true. Because if I can get it down to where no predictions that I make come true, we're going to be in pretty good shape. I hope. The only thing I have to worry about is, what are you going to do <laughs> at that point? Now, how are they stealing from us? It's simple. The money was never printed. So when the government pays for something, they're paying with nothing that exists. Not only that, but the federal government has to pay this money that they were loaned that doesn't exist back. Where does it come from? Taxes, folks. Not only do they have to pay that money back, but they have to pay interest on the money, which was never even created, not even out of thin air. That's why you keep getting poorer every year. That's why the middle class keeps shrinking. That's why the price of homes has to go up. That's why inflation must occur. Because when you create something from nothing, it creates inflation. When they blame inflation on, on, on an oil shortage, and everybody buys it, and everybody says, yeah, it's all because of those damn Arabs. It's a lie. It's a manipulation. It's because they have put out so much of nothing that you're spending in the form of credit, that inflation must occur. Remember when all the housing prices went through the roof? Nobody had any trouble getting credit anywhere. That's why. If you wanted $200,000, all you had to do is walk down the street and ask for it. And you got it. And the guy that owned the home knew it, so he raised the price of his home to get some of the action himself. And pretty soon, everything went through the roof. That's what inflation really is. It's a manipulation of the money supply by introducing worthless money into the system. In the case of the Federal Reserve, it's done by issuing credit. Your taxes have to go up. They're going to go up, and they will always go up until you reach the level of poverty that they want you to be at. Because the interest has to come out of the sweat of your work, because it doesn't exist anywhere else. Does everybody follow me? Is anyone lost? It's important you understand that, because you must understand this. And the destruction of the Federal Reserve is the first step in the road to freedom. 
first step that must happen. What I discovered in the documentation when I worked for the United States Navy in the Office of Naval Intelligence destroyed my life for years. When I discovered all this, when I discovered who really shot President Kennedy, when I knew what the real reality of the world was all about, my life went to shit. And I jumped in a bottle of booze. And I thought that I could really drink this away. I thought that I could make it all go away by ignoring it. I thought that somebody else would take care of the problem. But it doesn't work that way. And I didn't get my life back together until I began doing what I was supposed to do, and that's what I'm doing tonight. And you're going to find that once you have this knowledge, it becomes a burden, because now you're responsible to do something about it. And if you don't, your life's going to go to shit just like mine did. And you're not going to be able to live with yourself until you begin to do what you're supposed to do, and that's become responsible. It is to live and walk in a state of divine grace. And that means nothing more than being responsible for yourself, your family, your people, your country, and the world. It means understanding that the World Bank built the road into the Amazon so that the people in Brazil who were poor would burn the forest, so that you would scream for more control so that they can't burn the forest. And that control will be the new world order. Because no sovereign nation state can tell another sovereign nation state what to do. The answer is no more sovereign nation states. The answer is the new world order. Everything is screaming for control and everything has been engineered by these secret societies to bring about synthesis and excuse me, thesis, antithesis, which will result in a clash, causing you to scream for the solution that they wanted all along. Understand that when big, giant corporations pollute the atmosphere and the land, it's done on purpose. Understand that. Understand that Detroit has had for many years the plan to make a very clean engine that would go a long way. Understand that a hydrogen engine has been developed for many, many years, but is being withheld from the public because it doesn't pollute enough to ask you to demand for total control to save the world from pollution. Everybody follow me? Yeah, I hope you do. <laughs> this is a spiritual thing, as I said the other night. This is a battle. It is a war. It is it's in its final stages. And whoever wins is going to be the victor for a long time. We're playing for high stakes. You're playing for your very soul. You're playing for the future of mankind. This country, what we have here, is not possessed and has never been possessed by anyone else in the history of the world. No peoples have ever had the freedom that we have. No peoples in the world have ever had the opportunity to truly govern themselves. Never. Anywhere. And no other people in the world have flubbed it so miserably as we are flubbing it. We're flushing ourselves right down the toilet. That's what's happening. This country was founded to bring prophecy to reality. And it's going to happen. You see, one of the reasons we're so stupid and ignorant is because they won't teach us what the hell the real truth is. And I dislike that intensely. Number one, nobody in this room owns anything that they think they own. In 1938, the United States declared bankruptcy. Congress declared bankruptcy. You can find this in the records. To be able to function as a government, they had to borrow money to make the government work. They pledged as collateral for the loan, which has never been repaid, folks, all the property of the United States of America. And what is the United States of America? We, the people. You became a resource. Look at your birth certificate. And, and by, while we're at, why do you need a birth certificate when I see damn well that you were born? At the top of it, it says Department of Human Resources. It is you that produce the wealth that is pledged as collateral for the loan. That's why you can't get a deed to your house. That's why none of you have a title to your car. How many of you think you have a title to your car? When you get home and read it, you'll see that it says certificate of title. The state holds the title as collateral for the loan. All the assets of the United States of America are pledged to the bankers. That's why I've always said, and it is true, when the New World Order becomes a fact, there will be a redistribution of wealth. 
You don't own a deed to your house. You own a warranty deed. That's what they give you, isn't it? You know what a warranty deed means? It's a guarantee that a deed exists. But you don't have it. The state retains the deed. Yes, Robin? You can get an allodial patent deed, an allodial patent title to anything that you have purchased if you want to go through the long, incredible maze of obstacles and hardships that will be put in your way to do it, but you can do it. But, yes, it would. You see, one of the proofs that you don't own your own home is the taxes that you pay on it. If you owned it, if you had an original allodial patent deed to your home, they cannot charge you taxes because the taxes on your home is really a rental payment to use that home until its real owner comes to get it. If you don't believe me, remember that you may have a $200,000 home, but you just miss a $200 tax payment and see how long you keep that home. Under the Constitution, they can't take your home unless they give you just compensation. I guarantee you, you will not get a penny. Everybody understand what I'm saying? You don't own it. That's why you won't get a penny. You don't own it. You don't own anything. You don't even own yourself. You are a resource, a human resource. Yes, sir? No. No, we did not. But in my work on the briefing team, we worked with a lot of photographs that uh, had been interpreted and over a three-year period of time. I became somewhat adept at understanding a little bit of the art, but I'm no expert by any means. Yes, sir. Freemasonry is in a pyramidal organizational structure with degrees of initiation. You don't learn the ultimate secrets to get to the top. The 33rd degree is split into two parts. One part doesn't know anything about any of this, and neither do anybody below it. The other part begins the lower rung of the degrees of the Illuminati. And we have identified 64 degrees so far. Yes. One is at Wickenburg. Um, he wants to know where the, 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 excuse me, the three detention centers are that were built in the state of Arizona. Uh, it's in my book. I forget which chapter, but they're in the book. One is in Wickenburg. Yes. There's a relatively small town called Perryville, and I have traveled past there many, many times in my life, but I'm sure many of you have. And there's been just a, a small prison complex, maybe this twice the size of Kmart, perhaps that has blossomed unbelievably in the last short period of time. If you drive by and note your odometer, when you first see the first confinement apartment, or whatever you want to call it, you go 1.2 miles before you leave the last. This is astonishing. The next time any of you are, are taking I-10 and go past that, verify what I'm saying. It is astonishing at how quickly that is going. What he's talking about is the New World Order is, is setting up already in this country and in other countries detention centers, concentration camps for people who have mental illnesses. Some of these are going to be on abandoned military bases, and this was passed in a law, Public Law 100-690, which is published in my book also, which states that uh, military installations can be used for mental treatment centers. Now, why do they have to be mental treatment centers? because patriotism and nationalism in the New World Order will be considered to be a mental illness and is not compatible with the new nation state, the one world government. Does everybody follow? These people will be re-educated, brainwashed, whatever it takes, and if they can't, they'll just be executed. They're not fooling around. This is the culmination of everything. This is why I'm trying to tell you it's so important that you wake up. Most of this is documented in my book. I've been told that this is the most thoroughly documented book. It contains more suppressed and hidden information that's ever been published in the history of the world. I'm very proud of that. It's also the only book in the world that comes with a guarantee. If you think you got took when you buy this book for any reason at all, you don't even have to tell me. Just write me a little note, paste it on the front of here, and send it to me, and I'll send you your money back. I don't do anything unless I can put my name on it and back it 1,000%, period. And I mean that. So far, nobody's ever done it. I don't know why. There must be somebody who's not happy with that book. <laughs> because it's just the law of averages that somebody will be. Yes, sir?
if extraterrestrials are real, then they have been controlling us since the beginning of our history, and you can find reference to it throughout the written history of all peoples of the world and even in the Bible. If they're not real, then it's the biggest hoax in the history of the world to create the alien threat to unite all humanity in a one world government to face that threat. And what we find written in history are accounts of angels, are paranormal phenomena that we can't explain. You see, because extraterrestrial intervention in history, written in history, is an interpretation of what was written. But it's pretty hard to interpret it any other way when you hear people talking about and writing about gods descending from the skies and craft that they describe that is exactly what we're seeing in the sky right now. It's tough to ignore that. But there is no proof anywhere in this world that extraterrestrials are real other than somebody say so that they spoke to one or saw one. Well, you know what's really suspicious about these little gray dudes that are running around with the bug eyes is all through the history of the world, every description of every encounter with any kind of, of any extraterrestrial being described as such, they've always looked exactly like you and I. Up until the time when we had the capability to do genetic engineering in the laboratory, and then up pops these little gray dudes with big bug eyes. That's incredible to me. I mean, if, why is there never any mention of them before that particular point? And I happen to know this for a fact, that whatever you perceive as the state of art, the state of technology, the state of medicine in the public realm, they're at least 50 to 100 years ahead of that in the Black Projects in secret. I know that they have the capacity to clone a human being right now in a laboratory. Ezekiel is one place in the Bible that could be interpreted as an extraterrestrial visitation to the other. Another one would be Jacob's Ladder, where he saw beings climbing up into the sky. You know, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of references that can be interpreted as extraterrestrial beings, contact, landings, whatever. But it doesn't mean that that's what it literally is. One of the records in history that's very hard to ignore are the Vimana scrolls from... from uh, India, which literally outlined the history of peoples that came from the sky in ships that landed, that established colonies, that fought wars. The wars are described as, as atomic blasts and the effects that, that had on people that lingered, their hair fell out, are, are the symptoms of radiation poisoning. Um, it's incredible what is written in the history of the world. And I don't believe that, that it's all a bunch of bullshit either. But I'm going to say this again. There is no proof of an extraterrestrial presence or being anywhere that would stand up for one second in any court of law in this land. I thought I had proof at one point. I have drawers and drawers and drawers and drawers of documents and top secret documents and things that have been leaked to me and photographs. And I got three superior court judges from the state of California to come to my home and take this documentation with them and tell me if I had any proof of extraterrestrial presence on this earth. You know what they told me? Said I didn't have one document, one photograph, one shred of evidence in my entire collection that would stand up for one second in any court of law as proof. None of it's certified. You can't really pinpoint the origin of any of it. Even when it comes from the Freedom of Information Act, its origin and truthfulness is questionable. <laughs> It's incredible. These judges were leveling with me. They wanted to help me. If there was any way that I could prove it, they were going to help me prove it. And I've got some of the best documentation that exists anywhere. And it's no good. Now, if they were really visiting this earth, don't you think it's odd that we don't have one shred of proof after thousands of years? I think that's odd. Probably intentional. Look how the government treats this. They let information leak. They let people like me see reams of documents saying that there's extraterrestrial visitation and then they deny it. Now you have to understand that if these secret societies have been withholding information and knowledge and technology from the masses of us for thousands of years, they could have had a nuclear submarine in the year 1000 maybe. Who knows? Maybe you read Jules Verne's books. You really think he dreamed all that? Every single thing he wrote about became scientific fact. And none of it turned out to be baloney. You think he dreamed it? I don't think so. I think Jules Verne had some conduit to withheld knowledge. Now, I'm not saying they had a nuclear submarine in the year 1000. I'm saying that it's possible. Look, in 1897, all across this country, and you can verify it in the newspapers in your own town, 
there was a huge airship sighted flying across the country, all over the place. It landed in several states, and the occupants talked to people. And they were dressed exactly like the people dressed who lived in that time. And in one place they landed, somebody asked them, you know, what are you doing? We're flying my uncle's airship. He's an eccentric inventor. Where are you going? Well, we're going to Illinois or wherever the hell it was. Brad Steiger can tell you this story better than I can. And when they got up there, somebody asked them where they're going. They said uh, that they came from Texas, where they landed the first place, and that they were going to fight in the uh, Spanish-American War, which wasn't until sometime in the future. Now, this is in the newspapers. I mean, these things can be accounted for. In one place they landed, the guy traded the guy a sack of steer manure for some food. The people in the airship gave him some food. You know what it turned out to be? Buckwheat cakes. So you know damn well they didn't come from Venus. I mean, it was the same recipe as those people made in their own house, buckwheat cakes. Now, let me tell you something. If this head in technology can do what I've seen it do, it's a time machine. And if it's a time machine, the events described in history could have been us or someone in the future utilizing that time machine to engineer the future. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm telling you this. I have seen these things demonstrate characteristics that can only be attributed to a craft that is able to warp space. And if it can warp space, if you know anything about the theory of relativity and Einstein's work, you know that if you can warp space, you can warp time. And that if you can travel from here to here, by effectively pulling this point to you, you can go forward or backward in time by the same mechanism. I believe that they perfected the unified field theory in secret, and that they plugged in the equation of gravity, and that they know exactly what it is. I happen to know for a fact that we have planes flying that are powered by fusion reactors. I've seen them fly. I know that the pilot in these planes does not breathe air. They breathe oxygenated fluorocarbon liquids so that they don't get the bends, so they don't have to worry about compression and decompression, and the effects of the g-forces or gravitational forces of rapid acceleration are nullified because it's as if they're acting upon a complete body of water rather than a body that contains air and dissolved gases. And don't dismiss this, because we experimented years ago when I was the head of the Mixed Gas Deep Saturation Diving Department College of Oceaneering with oxygenated fluorocarbons. We didn't just pull that out of the air. We got the initial idea from the space program. I didn't say they were bad. They firmly believe that they're doing what's right for humanity. They believe that. Have you ever seen anybody in your life to believe that they were doing the wrong thing? Even murderers justify their deed to themselves. Nobody does something if they truly in their heart believe that they're doing the wrong thing. They believe sincerely that what they're doing is the only hope for the future of mankind. This is what you have to understand. But so does everybody on this earth. Is what you also have to understand. There's not a person in this room doesn't believe that they're doing the best uh, that they know how to do for the future of humanity. What I'm trying to say is not that everything that they're doing is wrong. It's that we're not allowed to participate. That's wrong. Our fate is being decided by someone else. That's wrong. They will decide who will live and who will die. That's wrong. Someone who believes that they're smarter than me and are the only ones who have a right to determine my future is my enemy. Period. You're going to have to prove to me that I am a dumb animal before I will accept any of that or would join any order that believed that. It's wrong. We must be educated. We must be taught how to use our intellect and then we must be allowed to do it. And only, only, if that has been done and we fail, then would I submit to someone else's control. But if we fail to wake up and do the right things and use our intellect, I will tell you, they will, we will prove them right. And if we prove them right, then I will be forced to join them. And so would anyone else who is intelligent in this world. You would be forced to join them if we prove them right. Because someone has to make sure that the human race survives on this planet. I'm not talking from a religious point of view, I'm talking from common sense. Plain old ordinary common sense tells you that. You have to understand that. But we have to have the chance first. Now they 
say they've given us the chance when they founded this nation and we blew it. Sure, we blew it. But the real knowledge has been withheld from us. So that, I don't consider that a chance. I'm trying to wake you up to some of the real knowledge, and I'll tell you right now, there's so much of it that I don't even know that what I know is an infinitesimal part of what there is to know. That's what I'm learning. The more I study this, the more I realize how ignorant I am. I'm no longer stupid, but I'm still ignorant. <laughs> it just never ends.